friends and gamers, and welcome to the Fortress. This is a rule clarification video, and I thought it was an interesting enough video that I bring it to your guys' attention. This is not me trying to wiggle out of something or cause controversy. You know, my opponents are being very gracious in allowing me to make some changes because my understanding of the rules was different, and so therefore I executed my movements in a certain way that I did not expect. But what it has to do with is terrain features. And so I thought it was interesting enough to bring to your guys' community, uh, to, the, to the community at large, just to bring it to uh, bring awareness to it. So first of all, let's take a look at the quick reference sheet in regards to terrain. So as you see on here, there's no desert terrain on here. But we do have mountains here, and mountains are similar to desert. All land units, except cavalry, have their movement reduced to one. No blitz. So let's not even talk about Blitz. We're not talking about Blitz whatsoever. Blitz is when you attack two territories with the same unit, um, you know, concurrently. You know, you hit one, then you hit the other one. This is not a Blitz. <laughs> this is simply a, a combat movement. So what's occurring now is, uh, so in the rules it says, for mountains, cavalry aren't affected, but for desert, it's not on here. The phone I'm using is actually my rules phone, uh, and that's why it's kind of got poor potato quality. Um, but for deserts, cavalry are affected by... Uh, by deserts and their movement is reduced to one. So the reason I placed my free French forces here and made this kind of a small bastion of strength is because I didn't expect these cavalry can hit me here. So my opponents are being very gracious and allowing to make allowing me to make adjustments. So these three infantry will be instead built here and these units will be here in Transjordan. So that's what's going to look like instead. But um, for right now let's leave this right here because <laughs> for me it is interesting enough just to demonstrate it this way. So the question is, when are you subject to desert rules? So in the rule book, when it speaks about desert, it says, when subject to desert rules, all movement is reduced to one. So the question is, when are you subject? If you're originating from that territory, for sure you're the subject of that rules. If you're passing through, well, yes, um, you know, when you exit this territory, you still have a movement of one, and you go in here, you have a movement of one as well. Um, you're pretty safe to assume that you can't get into this third territory. But it gets a little bit more controversial when this is your destination territory. So if you go into this territory, does that mean your movement has retroactively been reduced to one from coming to this from this area, and therefore you couldn't have gotten into this area because you're now at a, a you know you, as soon as you declare this as your destination, theoretically you could go you, one a person could make an argument saying well your movement's reduced to one and so therefore you couldn't get into this territory, which is the idea I had behind it. Because one could say the same thing in regards to, say, mountain terrain here. If I had tanks originating from this territory, can I go 1-2 if I control this territory? 1-2 into Afghanistan. Or must, since mountains reduce my movement to 1, does that mean I can't actually get into the mountains that turn? You see, I avoided the word blitz because people like to say blitz because it's fun to say, blitz, I'm blitzing over here. Well, what you're trying to say is just moving fast. <laughs> so could I get tanks from this position through a friendly territory to this one? That is up for debate. Um, maybe not as much debate as I think so. But certain things I think is debate worthy tend to not be <laughs> debates whatsoever. And certain things I th see as completely normal end up being debate worthy, which is kind of weird. Uh, it's an odd way of, uh, I don't know why my mind works that way. But anyways, so can these cavalry hit this position here? So I'll tell you my understanding of how I interpreted the rules before, and uh, you guys give me your feedback on it. When it comes to defense and offense, so the way it usually works out, is the way it always works out as far as I'm concerned, except for commanders, is you take the highest offensive modifier and the highest defensive modifier. So in this case, it's a mountain train um, behind a fortress in a city. So you, theoretically, it's a, you know plus two for the fortress, plus one for the city. You'd have a bonus of plus three. Well, you don't do it that way. You just take the highest modifier. And defense, you know, the defense work, oh, sorry, the offense, it works the same way. Um, the only exception, I think, is when you have commanders. I think commanders do stack, so in this case, you'd have a three defense in that city, which makes uh, the commander's expansion fun, but a little bit overpowered when you have commanders. Certain battles are just definitely won by, by uh, who's got the most commanders or the best commander in, in position. Oops. Okay, so this, uh, we don't have to worry about commanders, but that was my interpretation of the rules, is you take the modifiers from all three territories you're going through or into, and you take that into account and reduce your movement accordingly. So if you're coming from this territory, and say it was a desert, so say if you had cavalry coming from this territory here, that's Soviet territory, and uh, they're going to this terrain here. So you're originating from this territory, so your movement is a one, right? Now you go here, and now your movement has gone up to two, kind of off camera, and so that means can you go now to this position here? 
for a movement of you know uh, a two. So do you suffer from this pen penalty right here, movement of one? But you come out here, so now you're free to that penalty, and now you can go over here. Is that the way it works, or is it if you originate from a territory, you suffer that penalty? because it's the highest one across three territories you're going to. So that was the way I interpreted the rules. But it turns out I could actually be very wrong that these cavalry, even though the destination is here, where their movement would be reduced by one, their army can actually still go one, two into this territory. Interesting to see. Um, and, and I'm pretty interested by it. For me, what really gets me, just my mind, is when are you subject to the desert rules? The originating territory? the passing through territory or the destination territory? Or is it all three um, and whichever one is the highest reduces it? Something like that, right? I think you get my meaning without me trying to explain. But if you're subject here, negative one. And now you're at two, so now you can go here. Is that the way it works? Or can you simply, uh, you get the idea. I'm beating a dead horse. So that is something interesting here. Um, and now we might see the same thing with, say, mountains, right? Where you have cavalry coming into jungle. I think jungle reduces movement as well. So you could have cavalry coming one, two into jungle. Uh, so that would work. Jungles, deserts, and mountains for everything else. So yeah, something to bring to your guys' attention. Let me know what your thoughts are on this one. I'm curious to see if I'm the only one that interpreted this wrong <laughs> or if uh, I'm just mega confused. But yeah, so there's there's some debate on this in my mind anyways, and I could be absolutely wrong. It could be much more simpler than I anticipated. So anyways, to end this, these three militia, uh, sorry, infantry and this militia are built in Syria, and then all these units stay back here in Transjordan. So that's the way that looks. And um, I believe that is it for corrections. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye.